Mm-hmm. Didn't you complete until the end after MTV Sync when you played it for Bruce or something like that? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, actually yeah. oh wow, good yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. Deep cut. Mm. there was a stray guitar, hmm. and I just started noodling, kind of knowing that he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of, course. And, uh, yeah, of course. And all all Bruce did to convince me to finish the song in basically two days was like he just walked up and he was just like, "That yours?" <laughs> and uh, I was just like. Yeah, and he was just like, "It's good." <laughs> <laughs> and he fucking went. I was like, "Oh shit, I gotta finish the song." <laughs> We're in twenty twenty four. Two thousand fourteen was iconic year in our lives because we. all came together as a group uh, plus a lot of other people who came together to make something very special which, which i think everybody is very proud of uh, yeah. in this room and a lot of people outside as well um so yeah so i just wanted to kind of understand um before 2014 right if you can just take us a little bit through your songwriting journey till 2014 to just set a bit of background, sure, and then we can get into what happened in 2014. Yeah, I I think two two things I can say before uh, 2014 that was significant. One is yeah, I I had been writing songs from uh, like 2007 to then like kind of when I first wrote a song which was like full in structure and you know it had legs and and um, songs of legs. Out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just like you know, it had bones. Okay, yeah. had legs. <laughs> Limbs. Okay. Yeah, so um, so I so from then on, I kept writing, and I didn't really um know what to do with it. I didn't really care about performing live or anything. I just wanted to write songs, and then you know, I started seeing a bunch of uh, well, our contemporaries like like Nikhil D'Souza or Gauri Jaykumar, people on MySpace and stuff, putting out songs, and I was like, yeah, okay, cool, maybe something I relevant. Something. something relevant, of course, yeah. Mm. Uh, I was very jealous of something relevant. <laughs> yeah, that's why you didn't let us win, anyway. <laughs> we'll talk about that later in the <laughs> podcast. Should, 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 yeah, <laughs> got straight to that. But yeah, something relevant. You know, there was a bunch of bands and stuff. I went for Weekender. I saw Black Side Blues. I saw you guys. Um, and uh, then I was like, yeah, maybe I should also be playing some songs. So I started playing music in 2011. And I was in Pune, so I'd keep coming back to Bombay to play shows, like Thespo, live from the console, things like that. Uh, but the second significant thing uh, was also the reason why Krish Makija is hosting today's, uh, why you are interviewing us, and why that's significant is because um, I met Krish at an advertising firm called The Glitch when we were both working there. Um, and this is before, obviously, I I took music as a you know as my primary career. Um, So I met Krish there, and Krish said, "Hey, uh, I played him some songs, and he was like, 'Hey, uh, do you need a do you need a manager?'" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, sure." He's like, "Cool." And then two weeks later, he's like, "Okay, cool. You're playing over here." <laughs> and um, I played that show. It was some um, social, like some environmentally friendly, like some environment show. I can't remember what it was for climate change or something. And it was at some Birla grounds uh, in Juhu. So many which connections. Is, yeah, which is also oh, yeah. which uh, is the first show. Malika, uh, who also uh, plays music with us, she saw me at that gig as well. So and so Chris just started putting these shows together. and we played a bunch of things like rajasthan did a bunch of things by okay potato these are names that are so throwback now but you al and jj i met obviously through a tv show that krish and i were producing more like directing <laughs> called <laughs> mtv sync um yeah who was like yeah it, i just don't remember samsung galaxy else, note was, 2 yeah, presents correct, correct, correct. 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 that's right. true that's yeah. exactly correct. it so i met al it. and jj at <laughs> wow. cotton press studio over there and i met adil at no cover i mean for no cover charge which was like a internet video for yeah. covering I was, uh, indie bands i think krish was the one that put us so together. really krish yeah. is the conduit here yeah. Um, yeah. yeah no because you used to have all these songs on uh, was it soundcloud Yeah, MySpace. Yeah, you had you had stationery. You had a couple of these demos which you used to record in the yeah. Radio One uh, studio yeah. after hours and all of that. Yes. We used to work, and I remember sitting with Adil at his house. I, yeah, this was way before we met. I think this uh, was when I had just met you, and I had heard your SoundCloud, and oh, then so I was. Oh, this is the story of you making Adil listen. To he me. was yeah. like, okay, I don't know. Yeah, have you heard of this Tejas guy? Or and then like there was. <laughs> he's a, like, no. <laughs> I was like, who's that? <laughs> And then I remember listening to a bunch of like I think SoundCloud stuff, which was all acoustic. And you did something at the tribe. 
Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, there yeah, were some yeah. some of those recordings yes, as well. Yes, I did do those. So. And I remember really liking it, but I never. I mean, we didn't expect to play together. Did you guys know each other before? Did, did I, I mean, yeah. Did any of you know Alan? Yeah, 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 because you yeah, know, I, he's Jackie. I'll tell you why I, mean, I never. One of the things I always yeah. used to feel is that because I didn't grow up in Bombay, I missed this whole Xavier's Jai Hind. <laughs> You know, school or Bombay. I was so, never in Xavier. I I don't know what it is. People just assume that I went to Xavier. Yeah, I was never. I'm thing. not yeah, saying yeah, you, no. but I'm saying everybody kind of had this college <laughs> kind of upbringing here in Bombay. I, that I think more than college, it was a gig scene, gig scene thing yeah. and the band competitions. You know, actually yeah. college band competitions oh, going through like like common like there were multi band gigs which were there like uh, and they used to play your OCs your from OCs, OCs, yeah. 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 OCs yeah. yeah OCs were quite quite the OC and thing. also Color Compound had come to the studio to yeah. uh, I record think that the was album 2011, and 2011 right the first video we shot remember the, the actually you were there I wasn't there, there you but I, there, I know yeah, this the, time came, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this so was right after your Sam Uh, so we set right. up the studio after music school and I think uh, Kala Kampan was one, one of the first bands right. uh, who came in nice so, yeah. so this, this is another very important front. element to the story right what is this studio you're talking about studio ah. Cotton Brass Studio Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a recording studio. It was a recording was studio. A recording. <laughs> it was actually, where, where, actually yeah. still exists. We're we're very <laughs> close to it right now. Where we're recording also, in, in it's like very yeah. close to uh, Elfin Street. In in uh, for the it's record, it's close by. It's it's, it's very uh, close by in that direction. How yeah. many yeah. hours yeah. would it take to reach that studio? Oh. <laughs> so so depends on your depends on what sport, your yeah. skills in <laughs> Bombay Driving, traffic yeah. was. But yeah. it was a it was a studio we set up just after music school and was set up because it's close to our house. And the intention initially was just uh, a yeah. a place for the band, something relevant to go record, right. rehearse, and have that as a base of operations. And it just from there, like, hey, we have a studio, friendly bands come yeah. play. It was yeah. also great so, salesmanship from the landlord at that point in time because we were going in <laughs> at a four hundred square foot spot, yeah. and we went, and he showed us, and he's like, oh yeah, by the way, this spot, which is like. Three times the size of what you've come looking for yeah. is avail going to be available in a month. There's a small uh, flaw in that spot. There's a ancient machine which is hundred years old, which is in the thing, which was the which old cotton, cotton press. press. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, I mean, it was, it was great because it gave, gave the iconic. studio its name. It gave uh, yeah, yeah. the character to the place. So and whoever well recorded that studio, that it gave you that that specific drum sound. Yes, <laughs> and, and he didn't charge us for the square That's footage important. there. Whoever recorded that studio became amazing at U turns. You have to be able to drive. <laughs> amazingly Correct. to reach that place and so, also uh, manage to uh, uh, convert your car into a boat <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just true. once in a while so my gosh it yeah. was it was at cotton press where we met you the first that's when we where we were shooting yes. uh, mtv sync so that's MTV where Sink, we met yeah. you um, yeah. no so yeah so that's that's basically how like roughly you know all these parts i right. mean at least that's how i knew everybody right. but the so that's the thing so bling was a little different so by this point in time you've got a Repository of songs because I know back then you used to play me like I don't know how many versions yeah. or like semi structures like even newer songs like story and all used to yeah, play me back then yeah, so oh, this is yeah. this is oh when God, when I closed Glastonbury yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. story came on many it was albums like when I closed Glastonbury main stage <laughs> this is the song on a bit we're still we're still waiting on that yeah, but yeah, but yeah. yeah. songs ready oh, but so yeah. Yeah. so there was definitely like there was definitely many songs that existed in your book and in your brain so how did the the transition from hey these are friends musicians people i'm on the same page with plus i've got all these songs because i know at some point you had even attempted recording this album on your own <laughs> yeah. like just just solo acoustic uh, but yeah where did that little thing how did that i mean uh, chris you and i were in the office together i remember yeah. um i think the plan was like i had saved some money and we were still at the glitch and I was like, okay, cool. Let's record an EP, and the word EP was also just like, I mean, it's still a thing right now, it's but it's just thing. like yeah, yeah. back then it was like, oh, what's an EP? It's so strange. It's I mean, actually, like, back then the EP is even older. Than I I know, yeah, but I'm saying know, like yeah. to in in you know just to uh, be used in the context in the context of, yeah, of the yeah. independent music scene. You know, people are always cutting albums. Blackstar was still doing albums. He had Nights in Shining Karma and stuff, and obviously he's notable in this because Warren was uh, you know this guitar hero. Everybody loved him, and we all was. you know we were all big fans and it just happened that our, our boss at the glitch varun dugirala was a uh, very good friends with uttara 
uh, who's uh, who at the time was Black Strat's manager, and uh, obviously they were married. Wife. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I mean like that's how it, it was uh, important for us to kind of reach out to her. And so Varun was listening to us while we were discussing making an album. We like, oh, we should make an album. And then he was just like, hey, uh, you know. Uh, do you want me to just call Uttara right now and um, see if Warren would be up for producing the album? Because we were like, oh, that would be the, like, that's the dream. It would be incredible. Uh, and, um, and uh, so he called And he worked with Warren on sync, just like literally. Yeah, we, he came in. I mean, that was the dream also, man. Like mm-hmm. we saw, we had this one, it was like watching Ronaldo and Messi kind of chat. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Bruce Lee, Bruce, uh, Bruce and uh, Warren. Bruce Lee Nani and Warren Mendonca like chatting about like the amp settings. And I was just like, oh, yo, we're watching <laughs> some. And you know what? It still holds up, man. That shit is still true. You know, it was it was awesome to see. So obviously we had met Warren. He was like engineering on the project as well. So um, so yeah, we called Uttara. Uttara's like, yeah, of course he will. <laughs> He's right here in the car with me. <laughs> and then we're like, Wari, will you, will you produce this album? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, so sure. yeah, he has nice song. Yeah. So I'm like, cool. Yeah. Very, very understated. It like, was very un- underwhelming. He'll be like, huh. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. His music uh, is very good. Sign of approval from Wari. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing, man. Like, uh, <laughs> and we were just like, we were shocked. We didn't think it was possible. But uh, yeah, he was up for it. And um, and then we converged onto, you know, Cotton Press. And we had to, then the assembling of the, you know, team was a little... Avengers. Yeah, that was the that was the next step. Yeah, who was going to do what? So who was the, the final lineup? And, and what was everyone doing? Right, so obviously Al uh, on keys and percussion. Obviously. Uh, JJ on drums and a singular clip of production on that first record. <laughs> wait, wait, what's the production? He on Brave. On Brave. the bridge uh, of Brave. There's that. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> that was be- course, began the course, obsession yeah. with ARPS. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, Adil obviously had played with Adil on a track. Um, on Gindu. the No Cover Charge. Uh, no Cover Charge. Yeah. Right. Kunjkutka one. Yeah, with Kunjkutka. Which yeah. was, was pretty good. iconic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it iconic. Was it was because of Adil's head. Adil had a main. I had main. Yeah, it was amazing. No, the song still features in some of your... your yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in still, fact, yeah, yeah. the, the I, cool I thing about, about yeah, that yeah, is the back. light years have taken the ending, ending. that we made <laughs> and for that. And they play that oh, ending I now. See, yeah, this which is, never happened. Yeah, that, that's just very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's so, like the no cover reverse charge. It's like the GSP reverse charge has happened. Oh God, too good. So... What? <laughs> Excellent. So you on fire. Okay. Um, so yeah. So obviously I met Adil through that, and um, and uh, and uh, yeah, the other people involved in the project were uh, Tanmay, who's obviously you know something relevant. Also, you know, family. He was engineering on that project. Prashant was there. Um, you know, and um, Uttara obviously, um, and you, Krish. Yeah, but the question was also more like then. How did you yeah? How did you pick those final five for yeah, I'm the? Wondering. We used to go to uh, Uttar. Uh, uh, Uttaran, I mean, I remember. Do? I remember. I asked him huh. after what? the TCC gig. I went up and clearly just like you know, like just like put myself out in front of him. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah saying like that he has never a... done after. <laughs> but I didn't know this. Saying, I didn't, yeah, no, yeah. After the TCC gig where they just uh, right, opened, right. yeah, I went up to him and said, "Listen, if you need a drama, I'm down." Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's, yeah, that's the first time. I, I thought that the, the MTV Sync thing was I mean, the obviously real. Obviously, that's uh, where I knew it. But him. this was you confirming it. I mean, this was me I'm just saying it now. Time. Yeah, <laughs> if you want me, I'm willing. Take me. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah I've, I, I've never asked you this. Why did you ask me to play? Because it was a very. Uh, because we wanted your your absolute skills. No, because yeah. skill came, skill like, set. you had because I had not Al, Al, okay, so, so, so I Al is a triple threat. Okay, no one has been able to replace Al. It's like replacing Patrick Vieira at Arsenal. No, we've never done it after that it's never happened so uh, al is a triple threat right triple um, one. one is a triple <laughs> <Chezwan. Chezwan. laughs> he's rice Tasty. noodles and fried noodles okay Tasty. so um Egg is so the, the the two things uh, he played percussion which was so rare and different actually at the time also and you know um to have that in an indie yeah, band, with band, ocs and all yeah with oc on comps, comps. Yeah, on comps. Um, then he played keys so i was like oh cool so one is a rhythm thing one is a you know harmonic thing you can we can have, we can choose at any point yeah. to switch, which he did at live shows. Or you can do one with one and hand. And the third, the, the most important thing, 
He sang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sang like perfect harmonies. He's so good at it. And Much like, like um, JJ also. Sang. And yeah, JJ yeah, and yeah, Adil yeah. have are you amazing. Know, have you ever part. noticed that the harmony, not harmonies, like some of the new songs, they don't have like like harmonies which are like. I mean, now we have Malika, Arya, you know, to fill in. But but uh, <laughs> most of the other things I ask are, um, JJ and Adil to do are like. Huh. All like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All like it's shit. super yeah. integral to the new music. It is. Yeah, music. exactly. It's so very important. You need something with that. Taking as serious. iconic as the Ruby harmonies. Yeah, yeah, it's way more. You know, Adil still does the small victories harmonies. I do I've a noticed bunch in gigs. Oh, he, he does yeah. the small victories yeah. harmonies, and the other harmonies are like. And he's added a new harmony to Ruby. Which one? Uh, in the verse, second verse. No, it's not a harmony. <laughs> no, 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 it's now a, everyone stops line, and says, what, what, have, what I have I got? What have yeah. I got? Yeah, it's, it's a important. line we enjoy singing together <laughs> yeah. and somehow it's become a thing. Right? Yeah, it's I, sing, fun. I sing the harmony by mistake. He sometimes, sometimes stops, so then just that comes. Yeah. and then I have to tell you, we have this it's one video thing. of... Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, any video I see, like especially one from Weekender 2014, I have... It, like, you can see JJ doesn't have a mic, but he's like... <laughs> 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 like I felt so good. I was like, yes, awesome, <laughs> very nice, thanks. Um, no, sorry. So where was I? I can't the, remember. The, 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 the yeah, selection so the of the songs. songs. Yeah. I, I, co- I I can't really remember what the uh, because yeah, you're right. There was like stationery and all, but I just picked the songs which I felt were like kind of more newer and like cooler. No, I was wrong. So I newer. Uh, and thanks and uh, speech and drama. So um, yeah, so very, very I, I I just picked those and, and I and I also went to Warren's place and and we just sat down and I played those songs for him, and then he uh, he really liked philosophy. I remember he liked all of those songs which had those, and then he really like. He I, I will I will place. add to uh, yeah. important thing. So after you picked the songs, I remember not being a part of that decision making process. I was yeah. just like as we got closer to the date. I think I was sent an email by either you or Uttara, I'm not sure, saying, huh. hey, we're going to do these these five right. songs. So I was like, cool, cool. I'm going to check it out and learn it. And then we meet, and they're all old demos that you had recorded, just guitar and voice, obviously. Right. And Warren was like, okay, I'm going to Warren these yeah, yeah, <laughs> songs. He, Warren he changed all the chords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember being super intimidated by Warren because of, of who course. Warren is. Yeah. And I've never worked with him in this such a close capacity. So I was really excited <laughs> as a just a regular guy. <laughs> and uh, then I remember having to like unlearn yeah. what I thought was the, the actual thing because Tejas loves complexity and then Warren twisted that to another point. But he kind of made it perfect. Dude, he made it. So especially in songs like... Um, in philosophy, I remember was the w- where he did Phil the most Spectre. work. Like he made that Phil Spector. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just yeah, referred yeah, to it yeah, as yeah, Phil yeah. Spector uh, parts and whatever. But those chords, man, like he added like, you know, s- like these sevenths and stuff like which I hadn't really used ever before. I'd never made those shapes even on the guitar. So that was kind of cool. Um, he really, And the ending of philosophy changed completely. Wild, became man. this like heavy. I can't remember it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, da, 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 yes, yes, I can remember. Even that, I'm just uh, <laughs> even yeah. that really sleazy <laughs> keyboard part. That was one That was one And then he yeah. had that, you know, he he came up with like that line at the uh, uh, until the end, which is like which he called a C6 synth. Mm. That, mm. Yeah. 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 Is that such yeah. a that's strong wall? That's a very Warren thing. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I think he was really enjoying that vibe for a while. Yeah. Oh, I remember when he discovered the rotor switch on the Nord. Is like, let's play with this. So good. It was amazing. Uh, yeah. It really made uh, songs like Ruby and Next, Next Best Thing. Uh, those were really, really yeah. like, it was influential <laughs> in that. Yeah. yeah. So that actually brings me to like the, the pre-production stage, right? So I guess, like you said, you sat with Warren, but then where did all this happen? This was like during when you called everyone into the studio and said, okay, hey, we record songs now. And then you all bang like you worked it out. Then we did uh, we did three song three days three days that's three what days I was of say. rehearsal three days of recording three that's days three nights yeah I no, don't think no no, no. I don't think it we was rehearsed. three days of everything everything you, yeah one day you, just, you sent us the songs yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I remember this clearly when did you we send rehearse us, then? we had practice we sat in you came in the first day we, we made arrangements we, we made arrangements. And then we played it, and the the first time we played it through, I remember this very clearly. It was just oh song, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, it just came together, yeah. and the, and then we refined it over time. But like it just there was so I done. I, I can that talk clearly. about this yeah. from whatever I remember. You guys can yeah, no, it. this is yeah. good. So, I, I have, yeah. I've been because, saying the story for so long. I don't like, remember because you were so involved with a lot of other things. So maybe you don't remember it in the sequence. Yeah. But I remember, like I said, I got the songs, and then I came all prepared, and then like that one day we played all the songs. Yeah. 
but while we were doing it we made like minor changes yeah. of structure and stuff yeah and then we were like these are the songs we recorded them as like full whatever like run throughs and then the next two days we did live yeah, bass we, drums and you yeah for all the songs and i think across two days we and did keys also we did keys and, and keys yeah. all, yeah. but you also yeah. layered yeah. No, no the keys were layered percussion but, we played live I yeah, think yeah one of the two yeah. depending on the yeah. song huh? Like next best thing, I yeah. think you might have played. I, I, yeah, we, but you might we, have also. I don't know. No, I think, I think you definitely we, played percussion live. We played live. percussion live for both songs, yeah. and I remember uh, we because very clearly that we were tuning them high, so they could cut through in the live. Yeah. Uh, so oh, philosophy yeah. <laughs> congas are tuned really high. Yeah. yeah. For that reason, and like Correct. we decided, cool, we'll set it up. And really live when also. Warren mixed also the first record, he he did this like Beatles style panning of like the guitars mm. are fully <laughs> hard panned left, and the conga is like hard panned right. It's really cool. Great. Yeah, it was really and I nice. remember we had to nail it because yeah. it was live. Yeah. So you know, yeah. I've the whole point of this exercise is that you know we've we've all so done a remaster and all that stuff. So we've learned a lot of things, uh, things going back to the mm -hmm. to the stems and stuff. Uh, first three songs are um, are on click, <laughs> 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 and the other two start off, and then it's just vibes. Which, which are which are the last? Two? Um, next, next best thing, thing and, and until, until the, the end. end. Huh, yeah. Next best is not on click. It's not. On yeah. Click. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, so it's and it's great. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. I thought it until vibe. was on the end, but it's not on the end. Uh, until <laughs> it's on the click. Until <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It until was. had so many sections and like energy changes, it was not working on the click. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's almost so alien to me to do it that now that I think about it that way, but like. I mean, the songs work like it doesn't feel like you know the time is changing that much thanks to JJ being a a decent, uh, decent shot, yes. you know, <laughs> at, at drumming. So, so a rare yeah. occasion where you're being nice yeah, to know, him, know, just, and it's on camera, so it's recorded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there wasn't like a demarcated okay is this pre-production we'll work it out and Doesn't then go like into it. recording it was just a I mean the yeah the rough vibe was there I, I was also playing one of uh, Warren's guitars which was a the Gordon uh, yeah the Gordon the Sick. It was like a classical, but electric. Yeah, yeah. like you had a DI. You know, it, it was, was like a it wasn't like a full body guitar. It's like a yeah. It was cool. It was like really cool. Fat. Yeah, and I was also playing. I've never, I had never played with a band band like consistently to record and stuff. So, and it's mostly be, just been me following my own tempo. So I didn't know how. I, I I think I struggled a little bit with it. And then Warren would. I can't say this, but <laughs> Warren would do this thing. Which he had a term for. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> Where he he would take all the the vocals or like parts of like little guitar stuff, and he would just nudge it like <laughs> 10, 20 milliseconds, and he would say, "Now nah, it's it's, it, really it, it's good. been ten years. I think you can." <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, 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 it's, fine. No, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah, it was really really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, he's he was he was obviously now. Nah, I mean, like he was like the. Fifth Beatle, really? Oh, we Fifth? That, no, right? no, we were five Six? already. No, we were not five already. You're four. I mean, four. how many of us four are you? Four of us. One, oh, two, shit, three, I keep thinking. Four. And Warren. And <laughs> was there for the next no, then he joined us yeah. later. Yeah, 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 after yeah, yeah, Warren yeah, sorry, uh, so, yeah. went back. So Warren so, cameo. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you know, it was it was really good that he joined us, even like in this, obviously in the recording, but he also played a lot of shows with us in the beginning. He just kind of structured how to be band. <laughs> yeah, he settled the band. And then he, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what uh, England did for India, you know, when they left. <laughs> no kid. You know, it is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Warren made the trains. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Speak his language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> 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 we all speak his language. You have to subtitle that in case people yeah, don't yeah. pick that up. That has to be <laughs> so yeah, so no, it was it was really helpful. Okay, so then should let's move into then the yeah songs. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the songs. The track so by starts track. with starts with one thing. I don't know why. <laughs> it starts with Brave. Okay, one of my favorite songs is Jenny was a friend of mine from the first Great Killers song. album. Hot Fuss, which I, that album I've always used as a, like, you know, as a way for me, to, like, how do I approach an album? And it has to start with a banger. And I thought Brave was like that song, like you could start with, you know, this, like, in it, like a cool riff, cool co chorus. That's it. Yeah. So that's why it came first. Yeah. Catchy chorus. Yeah. yeah. Catchy, it's yeah. a pretty catchy chorus. And know that uh, we we recorded a, a oh, video yeah. of you at, at Little Door we have doing to talk Brave. About 
एम टी वी इंडीज चैनल दैट डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट एनी मोर यू नो ब्रीफली इंडीज वॉज दिस दिस चैनल एम टी वी लाइक मे लाइक जस्ट फॉर इंडिपेंड म्यूजिक एंड क्रिश आई शॉट आई थिंक द फर्स्ट इंटायर वेव ऑफ लाइक कॉन्टेंट और वेव यू नो शोज दे पुर वीडियोज ऑन दैट एंड सो सिंक वॉज ऑल्सो ऑन दिंक वॉज ऑन दैट ऑन दैट करेक्ट and so krish and i shot all these things for them but before with that we had to test out whether these ideas would work so i was the guinea pig for that and we shot like a version of brave that is still on my youtube it's, yeah right there, no yeah oh, and it doesn't there. and it doesn't have a bridge it has an o- like the old bridge which mm. is no bridge basically <laughs> it was the first thing we no, did yeah, yeah, that's it, all it, I, i mean brave was the first song that i uh when when you sent all the songs to me like brave was the first song that i opened up and is that the and first it's coming like that, that ah, okay cool. that groove like i mean that groove and that's mm. the first thing that i like i took like a good <coughs> half an hour and break and i was just listening to brave and i was trying to think of like what i would do on the song and i couldn't just figure it out so i said screw it i'll just sit down at the drum kit and that's the first thing that came out nice yeah, nice yeah it was yeah. fun first idea best idea yeah paul mccartney Um, I mean, I didn't say it like that. Yeah. It was like more like first idea, <laughs> <laughs> first idea. Yeah. First yeah. Idea. yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah. and when did and when did Farhan Akhtar realize it deserves to be? Oh, man, that is the actual story, man. It was so funny. <laughs> but none of you, only Al, were you were there, right? Things we blocked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Al, you were the only one who was there. I, I, so and, uh, it was you, me, Jishnu, Stuart, Stuart and you and Marshall. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we got this. Yeah. This is the this is the only pertinent. thing that ever happened to this song which is that's what we talk about every time I mean, on the stage i mean the song is synced in yeah, a major motion picture it was yeah. synced in a major motion picture yeah. oh it's synced in a motion picture anyway uh <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, a movie called rock on 2 which they've taken down from amazon prime we want to show my mom again and then it was just gone it's anyway, on geo or something so rock on 2 has yeah. an opening sequence where arjun rampal is now obviously successful and he owns a club we are the band playing and the song features no for spoilers, a good uh, no 30 40 seconds man yeah, yeah it's and, great yeah uh, uh, yeah it, it was cool i and, mean they used like the small figures in the background yeah but there for like three frames but, yeah, but we were there for 12 hours for that <laughs> shoot i mean it's the first time it ever happened to me like so i i mean i can't un you know It, it, yeah, yeah, no, it, it was it was a really cool it's moment. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dope. It traveled, a, makes it, uh, like, it traveled it a long really cool. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Humble so beginnings uh, of it was a uh, uh, it was interesting for us. Yeah. yeah. Then philosophy or more more brave trivia? No, no, no philosophy. More. Yeah, philosophy is a song. It was actually supposed to be three different songs, but then I made it into one song. I mean, I wonder if I'm still if I if I if I cringe sometimes when I hear the 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 rap section, which I I, I thought was super Jason Mraz. I think that's probably the most Jason Mraz <laughs> kind of influence. <laughs> but you know, I've been listening to it recently. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. It's a weird one, but it's cool. Like I I enjoy it. I mean, and, you got to do shit to get it out of your system. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, and and we it. put. I, I, you know, the thing I do remember about that song was that I I felt like. You know, if I'm in an uncomfortable situation, if I have an idea, only twice I felt this in like making music. Once was doing philosophy when I was like, "Oh, you know what this song needs? It needs like this kind of really fast lyrical section. Let me do that." And I felt really uncomfortable. I was scared to do it because I didn't know if I could pull it off or whatever. So that was the first time. And the second time was with the song "Bombay Doors," which came on many albums later when I was doing that pre-chorus. And I was like, "I've never done something like this before." So I've, whenever I feel like that thing about like, oh, you know, is this weird? Is it cool? I don't know. But it's always been the right decision to kind of like say yes, let me do it. And philosophy kind of unlocked that for the first time, I think, for me. So I was like, yeah, this is probably a good idea. Let's do it. And uh, yeah, and then when we played it live, we put you know we used to mash up like Spice. What is it, Spice Girls? Yeah, yeah. Spice Girls. Tell me what you want, what you really want. It was all like silly fun, and and yeah, it was good. I I enjoyed that quite. Had a, a bossa feel. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. And yeah, I mean, lot of the arrangement on album was also like pretty like a live Heavy song, or, like, and it was it was like a live. If it's not a classical album, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's right. it's got live section like hits and stuff like that. Is something you would typically have. Yeah, right. yes, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 yeah, are you not relating to the song because of the lyrical content? No, actually, the lyrics like, are quite funny now so, that I think about it. You know, I wrote it about an ex, you know, and and it was just like really like it was just like supposed to be like here's a funny kind of song. um because even the lyrics are really like cheeky and 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 stuff like that i mean the song does kind of like like it it doesn't stay still there's like a very yeah. through composed vibe to it in a mm. sense like i mean yeah you do come back to a verse and a chorus but then there's like the uh, i can't even quite remember it actually like, but there's, there's like multiple the, bridges there's and, multiple bridges yeah. there's little sections yeah. oh, middle eights and stuff and, like that and yeah. things like that which like and like so it doesn't like you're not like really coming back constantly like you can't there's no traditional sort of 
constant only verse chorus verse chorus bridge yeah. and out kind of thing yeah which we do now <laughs> which we do now which we do now yeah now we're just like forget all this nonsense now yeah. but I think, you know keep it simple that way. i remember one thing about philosophy is any time a new person had to play the gig like that song would be really hard for them to get because yeah. it was very complicated yeah. like each pre chorus i mean would be different then it had Correct. two bridges yes yes then the outro was like changing within <laughs> itself it would Yeah, like all yeah. these things and that we, we, we naturally gravitated to while writing it yeah, yeah. but then i realized like for a, like a listener it's it's a it's a hectic one yeah, yeah. it's it's hectic it's it, but i feel like all the work we've kind of done is 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 very like you have to kind of pay attention a little bit like it can some of it could be playlisty but like some of it is like oh active listening you know not mm-hmm. just like cuz it's it is fun to write that kind of stuff hmm. well, have, you uh, you can't it. casually listen to the song that's one thing about philosophy yeah, it yeah. can't it's not a song that comes on and then you can ignore it mm-hmm. yeah so yeah, yeah it's got I, that quality i have to set yeah. up a then meeting then why did so many people with the song <laughs> 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 let me move to the what i call the beating heart of the tejas cinematic <laughs> universe which is ruby Oh man, what do I Because say? I feel about like Ruby's song? Ruby's been there since like the very beginning, and like you said, it's it's the one song that's I think you've played live every time you play live. Ruby's in the set list. So, no, and it's also without yeah. fail that one song every time you play live, like you people, know that yeah. everybody knows the lyrics or most yeah. people know the lyrics. Yeah. I know remember at some random festival, people have come running up to you singing lyrics to you, shouting yeah. Ruby and all of that. You know, it is weird. I don't, I don't, I've still never understood why this is the song that people kind of gravitate to the most or or find something. M- it's maybe it's the lyrics. Essential ballad, love song, yeah. kind of catchy thing. I mean, it's, it's got a, it's chorus, got a catchy yeah. chorus. Maybe That's maybe it's I'm very saying. recognizable. Yeah, the name, the title, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, you know the. You're right. Like I've wherever I've played this, at least in India, you know, uh, it's it's always been like you know I- any part like that, that. If if anybody knows any song of mine, it's it's probably this. Um. So yeah. So I don't know about Ruby. It's just uh. Yeah. Everybody seems to relate to it. You know, it's a song which is you know it's an easy kind of like taking me for granted kind of like w- w- you know what do I do about that feel you know that melancholia that is associated. It has with a key it. change. It has a classic that's, key that's, change. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I was love that. that. There's a lot of sad engineering college students who relate to the <laughs> subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe. Yeah, there's, there's you know, that, I am yeah. very, I'm very proud. You know, I'm very no proud. No disrespect to engineering college students. Yeah, I was one of, of y'all. No. So, like, it's, yeah. So it, you can it, say. It. I can yeah, say. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can say it. Yeah, it's we like can't. Sing the. Anyway, listen. Um, so, so the one of the things I'm really proud of in this song is the bridge a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like that. The way that it goes to that key change was the first time I ever did something like that. I didn't know I could write like that, so I, I was very happy with the uh, with the way it turned out. And then I think when Warren produced it with like you know the organ and things like that, it kind of really filled it out. He added all he made us do those you know falsetto harmonies. It just becomes a, like a really like the first two choruses are kind of like sad, and then the last one becomes really joyful. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just I just love how even the chords kind of change. Uh, he introduced me to a major minor chord for the first i, I was like okay cool this minor is major chord isn't like a chord but the one chord which has uh, like the root is um, is like like playing a in the minor like top ah so you know. have a, it's a like, minor it's cool. major harmonic yeah. minor yeah. first chord yeah 3 <laughs> and flat 7 and then precisely anyway uh, so i i didn't i didn't know how to do any of that but he was yeah, obviously quite instrumental in doing that but um, yeah the song is It's good, man. I mean, like, uh, we. I still like. It's a it solid. Now. It's a solid song. It's. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, he played. Uh, he played acoustic. He will play it with the band. Did we, he use the the twelve string on the? Yeah, yeah the song? That's, that, that's the other that's, cool that's thing. That's one thing. Yeah, he yeah. had that white twelve string electric, which he played. It's then the. The choruses and then the post-chorus. Did he play with a slide or the, no? It was no, no, he just, just played like the arpeggiated line. part. Yeah, 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 it was really yeah, yeah. cool. Um, also, yeah, he did cool. one thing which I, I like that Warren does is he has an E flat guitar. Yeah. Mm. So like there are some songs where he can like bring out these voicings yeah, that only true. happen on E flat open tuning guitar, and he used it on this one because the song's in B. I think it's yeah, yeah, it it's is. The first it starts in B and then it goes to A flat at some point. Yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's all. amazing cool things. things that i yeah had no idea you could do uh yeah but the song has lasted a long time i i appreciate that a lot you know if it's a, it's a song that i guess has become quite associated with any of the music we put out yeah i'll yeah. apply whenever we perform you know yeah, yeah. Interesting. But people yeah. cover it a lot. I mean, it's a good song again. It's a good song. <laughs> good bones, good yes. bones. The good song. Good yeah. lie. It's got legs. It's uh, got legs. Got yeah. legs. Uh, okay, I'm hearing this, but okay. Then we move to my favorite song, which really? is the next it's best my, thing. It's my favorite song. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's. 
and I feel like it gets zero footage. It's the like, fucking forgotten like, hero. Bro, like you also played it like three times, and no, after no, no, that, no. retired it quickly. I actually used to. So this is a we song play I a lot. play a lot yeah. solo. Like I, I, I still play this song if I have a, the odd I, solo. Game actually, game. every time we used to do duo sets, we yeah, used to play. Yeah, we used so to play it acoustically. But we, yeah. I mean, we played it as a band yeah. a bunch of times. As also. a band, we played it a lot till we till till, till we reached a point yeah, where we yeah. uh, we had a lot of other songs. Then the, this was one of the first songs to go out. Okay. I also think it happened because it lacked percussion after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> someone departed. That's true. That's yes. true. I, I, you know, you know what I do think is that this song itself is about like being. It's kind of underrated. You know, th- there's a line from the song which I still like, which is like, you know, mm-hmm. we're not underdogs. We're just, you know, we're not animals. We're just underdogs. That's, so I kind of like that this song kind of is became what it was talking about in a way. You know, no, and for me, the main reason why I love it is because I feel like thematically, what you're trying to say. Yeah. that song was so great and especially because you're trying to sum up that point in our lives where you know we're just starting to yeah. kind of do something substantial we've got a lot of ideas this is the first step to realizing those ideas and you're talking to like the whatever gatekeepers of yeah, yeah. the the industry yeah, and all saying being underground yeah. you know we we can <laughs> we can we can fucking do cool shit as well yeah and now looking back i feel like at least where we are all sitting today and see where we were then i feel like yeah it, like it it it's yeah, it's beautiful. Be, yeah, yeah, it was. Anything else? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only stupid point I'm gonna make is that it, there's a lyric there where you say "small victories." Yeah, right. And yes, I like it when that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. Did you it was? Uh, how did the album name come about? By the from way, this song. From, from this song, song yeah. you know. Okay, fine. Oh, we should maybe <laughs> play these songs again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah maybe we'll have to now. Yeah. Oh, this song was ruined by Tanmay for me, by the way. Because oh, yeah. he, he ruined the, he ruined the chorus go. for me. I was just and, gonna, oh yeah, yeah, and, oh yeah. And, and, and this and is the, the most oh, significant. Yeah. So it's so, so Tanmay's version of the chorus was maybe all the hot girls will follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he and said just as a joke, as a passing joke, and you know it's just like a like a giveaway joke, and it's like. Damn it! It's ruined for me forever because I cannot sing wow. anything. Even Twitter Rupa, doesn't exist. Yeah. Rupa, Rupa kept thinking Follow that uh, he, uh, Tejas was girls. into white girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah because white girls. Yeah, white girls. What, maybe I will know. hide. That's the actual lyric. Yeah, yeah. yeah, now we know. Maybe I will hide Finally, girl after ten yeah. years. Yeah. So it was all about girls. So yeah. that's how that song was ruined. Okay. Right. Yeah. Didn't you complete until the end after MTV Sync when you played it for Bruce or something like that? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. actually oh wow, good yeah, shout. Yeah, yeah. Cut. Mm. yeah, yeah. Actually, that is true. Oh my god, now it's all, it's all coming back. Um, I had the riff until the end, and then I uh, Bruce was there, and I was just like, "Hey, can I?" Because obviously, I also want to say I'm also a musician, bro. You guys are just playing. I'm just behind a camera. But um, yeah, so I just played him the the riff, and I played him that. Oh no, no, sorry, no, that's not it. There was a stray guitar, hmm. and I just started noodling, kind of knowing that he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And, um, yeah, and all, all Bruce did to convince me to finish the song in basically two days was like, he just walked up and he was just like, that yours? <laughs> and I was just like, yeah. And he was just like, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and you fucking went. I was like, oh shit, I gotta finish this song. And it's it 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 came out, man. Yeah, it was yeah, good. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I am glad, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> that was good. Okay. So until the end, which is like a tonal full left turn from everything that came before it, <clears throat> where did that sort of where did it originate and how did it reach where it reached? Uh I guess this is the maybe very early seeds of my uh anti-establishment kind of, uh, you know, persona coming Josh. through. Yeah. Uh, I wrote this uh, riff. I mean, we obviously spoke about that story yeah. with Bruce. And, um, you know, it, I, I knew the riff was really kind of like serious and, you know, it was not uh, like the other four songs in that regard. So when I started writing it, I, I just, I think, uh, you know, there was a change in government <laughs> that year. And, um, you mm-hmm. know, it has, you know, subsequently been very um, influential in all of our lives as as artists or, you know, for freedom of speech or anything like that. So so I, I thought it was maybe, you know, now looking back, maybe it was a little prescient. And um, uh, but I, what I was trying to say in that song really was that, you know, the cyclical nature of society uh, or at least, you know, like how and I, I was started th- talking about indie versus mainstream. But then it became about like society. And then the more I thought about it, it became larger and larger, more about rebellion and things like that. And um, 
and uh, yeah i mean so I, when we were writing the song i also wanted to be conceptually following it so you know it starts with this in like innocent acoustic guitar riff and it goes through this world of music like really really heavy you know uh, parts and and then it when it finish, the song ends also with just the acoustic guitar so i just wanted to try and capture that um but yeah i think the song was really i mean uh, this is a serious part of it but the real fun about the song was that it was like for yeah. on like you know rock music yeah um which is the first time i got to even explore that otherwise it's always these cute little you know indie singer songwriter kind of stuff but this one was like hey you know we mean business and i think the the thing that made me really realize that it was um you know this heavy rock song apart from warren just his presence on this entire record but he dropped his uh you know the, his guitar to not, like you know you usually do a drop d he did a drop c sharp or something on this <laughs> yeah i remember and, that and uh, yeah. you know it was like and he was so excited by this song i remember he called his brother zoran <laughs> and he was like yo check out the song <laughs> <laughs> so he put like layers and layers of guitars on it and obviously and also i i i, yeah. I remember when 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 that i think this was the second song that i opened up and i was trying to work on it and i don't know why my my energy was there was something about the guitar if that made me want to in the beginning try to take it into a different space in terms of i don't know why and now yeah. when i think about it it sounds so <laughs> weird i was trying to take it into some kind of like funky is space <laughs> was Can't so imagine. weird but the minute again i started playing to the song there was nothing that felt correct except for like a straight ahead straight, rock yeah. Yeah. kind of thing you know yeah. and we did a little bit of like well i won't call it funky but it wasn't like there was like some nice like half time like a, yeah, yeah half whatever time. whatever i mean it's got that like half time teardrop vibe in the yeah, backbeat yeah, which yeah, is there but which it's is it's, yeah. it's more intricate in the hats what you yeah and the hats is, yeah, yeah, was yeah, really yeah, really yeah, cool yeah. yeah i really enjoyed but the that. main but the point is that like i mean it's like uh, you can't fight the energy of what's already written mm. you know and that's what was uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, just the lyrics and stuff. So it's nice, you know, in that way. Did you play uh piano on this song or key or like uh, EP no, or something? EP, EP in actually piano There was also the a end. piano thing at the yeah. end. Yeah. And then there's in a the bridge. Bridge. organ ending in the end yeah, when it gets so heavy. Uh but it's funny because uh, when you sent me the demos and uh, I heard this one I dismissed it immediately. I was like it's too different it's not going to be on it. And there right. were the the other two songs I thought were way more in the zone of the album which were like i think stationary and, and evidence you're not wrong the, and and when i so i i kind of <laughs> like didn't think we were ever going to do it, so i didn't pay attention to it <laughs> yeah. till the recording because yeah. like i was like oh the other like there's there's a set of songs that makes sense in an ep More cohesive. and this one yeah. didn't make sense and then when we were recording it made even less sense to me <laughs> so i was like one second i'm wow, I very know. unsure that is actually these. so on the money no, because and, and i was like what i don't know what's going on and then it was only on day 3 like i remember this very clearly is that when it all came together and we had the parts and as like okay this is the last song and we actually sat down i think and there was one point where we heard it together yeah, heard the yeah. songs or, back or, uh-huh. and i was like damn it works hmm. like and it, yeah, it, yeah. it was till then i was just like y- you know i was i was like this is <laughs> not it's like four songs and a and a fifth song which is different <laughs> and it's only i, I even now if, it's only when you listen to the yeah, like the ep in order it makes sense hmm. yeah. it doesn't make complete sense on its own i agree I, you know yeah, I, yeah. one of the biggest criticisms of any of the music uh, you know i've ever put out has been that you know there's such a tonal shift like happening yeah. you know throughout it make it happen another record we did together mm. is is got you know literally it goes <laughs> everywhere yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, i think it's become so two things i can say about the one is that that became our like thing after that like which is like we'll just approach the song for what it is yeah. you know now we try to kind of like make it a little more coherent like cohesive in that regard but like i still enjoy you know doing that and and the and the second thing that it did was it now and it's still something we do today which is we always end with a with a dark song like uh, mm. you know make it happen also has that which, uh, which outlast has that falling song. out yeah falling, falling, falling out and maybe we're not enough right. you yeah. know so outlast is you know the last song of the same album so, so yeah. It, it, but yeah i mean i i, I still think the song is like really like it's still obviously very powerful musically lyrically still for me i i mean i guess it still holds up I yeah, think it's you know. it's one of like my favorite songs. It's like, aged, like it's yeah. aged yeah. very yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. really. In fact, we I I put it on to listen because I couldn't remember what <laughs> <why I played. laughs> the song and we just suddenly played at the gig and we were rehearsing like and oh no I remember first things first I was jogging <laughs> and uh, and 
and uh, the and it was and it it came as part of like some indie playlist or some something on Spotify Ooh. or something like that. What? Yeah, What? yeah, yeah. Shocking. <laughs> or or it just played as part of something, and the song went by, and it there, it was a mix of like like uh, and I hadn't heard the song in a long time, uh, and it just played as part of the playlist and. And it, it didn't really occur to me that it's you know because something you've played. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because when you're running and all, and you're you know you're, you're not really focusing on the music when you're working out. It's just like adding yeah. energy. It's a, dec- it's a decent running, running song. song because Good it's got song. like the yeah. 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 you can you can pace yourself to the song. Yeah, so you're right. It's, yeah, it's interesting. And it was yeah. it was damn cool because like I heard the song and then then after the song just towards the end I was like oh wait one second this is fucking until the end. <laughs> <laughs> and it was uh, it was it was nice. So you didn't realize it was the song until the end yeah. of the song. <laughs> no, very good. Very good. Very good. Yes, I didn't realize it was until the end. Until the end, and the 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 point of the whole thing was that it felt first of all it felt good because like the it wasn't part of an indie. It, it was just a part of like all the music that I must have listened. To yeah, or, yeah, it was probably a those, liked songs or something. Whatever, yeah. but my yeah, my but my <laughs> point is that there was like there was like a songs from like international artists, this that etc. And it felt like it was meant to be a part of mm. that. You know, it felt like an It it didn't feel like oh it's some young first time band kind of doing their first kind of song. Yeah, know? no, fair enough. Felt, yeah, I think that song has aged like it, it, it is also good. structured really. Yeah, like and then when we and practiced when we when we when <laughs> I heard it again for the gig, that w- that was probably six months after this jogging experience again. <laughs> you didn't jog again after that. <laughs> no, 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 the song. I never jogged again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Actually, no, for yeah, my yeah. knees, you know. Fair enough. Uh, uh, fair uh, enough. For my knees, I was told not to jog. But anyway, uh, the the song is really cool. It's aged really well. it's got great parts melodically like and harmonically it's great and it like it <coughs> really just uh, made me think that we started with a good foundation yeah, i mean i know that's really. the last song of that album no, but, but generally yeah. overall like small victories was a victory yeah yeah sure i mean uh, i'm i'm glad that it's still uh, you know it still feels like a good collection of songs uh, and Sometimes I mean it's hard for me to listen to it. I always thought I would try to be one of those artists who doesn't mind their first record. It's such a cliche almost to hate your first record or to feel cringe and and all that stuff. And when I do listen to, I mean obviously the older we get, the more I'm like ah okay. But I think I want to just um uh, this is also my way of like kind of making my peace with it at the time. But I mean one thing which is very like curious to me, which as an artist and as we all are artists in some shape or form. there is of course especially during the creation process there's always immense self doubt i mean remember reading about how kubrick used to go home while he was making 2001 space odyssey and used to talk to his wife and say oh my god am i making the biggest mistake of my life is this yeah. all complete rubbish yeah, and like, all of that it is a lot like 2001 space it odyssey it is and so yeah. i'm saying like <laughs> 2000 it's you no know, something that i always go back to saying that okay listen if even if kubrick had doubts had doubts then who the who the hell are we Fair. to um, to to not have any doubts right mm-hmm. so so what was your sort of emotional sort of state of mind during that process i was just going to go have fun and like i so i had none of the pressure there was no expectation from me whatsoever there was no spotify mm. there was no apple music it didn't none of this existed nobody asked for this album actually there were and honestly also yeah. like there was barely an instagram also yeah, yeah there was barely an instagram there was also barely people making original music at that point in time i mean there was like i mean now if you think about it compared to what's happened in the last two years i'm literally saying last two three years yeah. it wasn't that crazy kind of like you know every week right now there's like every day almost there's something releasing you know yeah from there here from special. india like yeah. mm, like at that point in time yeah. there no, was no but even worldwide even right like just think about how democratic the process has become now that everyone can just do it especially in the pandemic where everybody had you know became a producer yeah, yeah, and yeah. started putting out stuff at that time it was like yeah it, it, there was something there was something novel about putting out a, an ep in india and also came with the ch- you know chap of you know warrants putting yeah, it out yeah, there and yeah, saying yeah. hey guys i produce this yeah. so you know a lot of people just tuned into that and you know uh, it, it was yeah it was really really special i mean krish and i uh, with a good friend zahan kapoor we shot the album art you know at, at prithvi house mm-hmm. you know and we were we didn't know we were just, we just put it out there my friend my best friend harry he did the artwork he did the you know little inscription mm-hmm. so it was just like just like kind of homemade you it know was. work you know putting this all together so it's it's strange you mentioned that there was no expectations and stuff like that because 
like yeah we were being extremely formal and sweet and like nice I mean, obviously JJ and I knew each other for a really long time yeah. but the rest of us it was uh, it's like hi nice to meet you like, yeah. like and and for me it was like the first uh piece of music or band that I was working with which was not my band yeah. 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 like it was not like yeah. what we your were, own what music not yeah. Our, yeah. Our, yeah. our music yeah. So for me it was a new experience, but I had no expectations beyond "chal, let's try this." And that's and and, and cut to ten years after that, and we are such close friends. I yeah, mean, I one think of that the most is emotional speeches at our mm-hmm. wedding, and it was just like yeah. this bond that we have shared over the last ten years. It's insane. Like I had no expectation that that would happen. So it's awesome. Honestly, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the the most that important is the legacy. Small yeah, 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 the biggest <laughs> legacy of the of the of this record and why it is important is because. The, the same group of people became very, very close, right? Like over mm. time. So, yeah. As you're getting older, sorry, name drop of a song. Mm. You, I mean, it just the stakes just seem to be much more, uh, I mean, seem to be higher because like time is passing and yeah, man. you tend to want to prove yourself. When you're younger, it's just like, okay, fine. You know what? If I screw it up or this doesn't work, there's time. Yeah. yeah it's a more fearless, fearless kind it's of time. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck around and find out. Yeah. yeah phase kind of, of situation. Life. So, so I guess, much finding out has happened. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. around. <laughs> since you've gotten older. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know all of us, changed, man. But I, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's not only to do with him, actually. I mean, you know, I feel it. I don't know about you, you two. Yeah, we were young once. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I'm just saying generally, age. like, like when, when I, when uh, this whole doubt thing, which is what mm. we're talking about, right? I mean, it's just a whole doubt of like, oh, you know, now how many more times can you do something mm-hmm. and it not, which is why the song Small Victories, yeah. like kind of also hits home in a sense, the, from, from a lyrical perspective, <clears throat> because so. like, it's also exhausting after a certain point in time, you know, because it's like, you have to be constantly inspired. How can you be inspired if you're doubting yourself? Yeah. All of these kind of things kind of play into each other. So. Yeah. The, the question looms large over everyone's like, are we still doing this job? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I have to keep, I, I, after I turned 30, I was like, okay, cool. I got to double down on this. You know, I can't half ass it, but it's still, you know, pandemic and everything aside, it was just like, oh, okay, cool. That's why, you know, I made this joke when we did one of our shows, but I was like, the album titles also became slowly more and more bleaker sounding. <laughs> like one, it started off small victories, we make it happen now. Then it was like Outlast. <laughs> this is survive, please. Oh my you God, know, like, I did not so, think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's uh, museum. Like, no. <laughs> more <laughs> simpler <time. laughs> You know, it's just... Uh, no, but that's actually a good point because a lot of us played in bands 10 years ago and yeah. like a lot of those bands are not still making music but we still are with this band and like with the same vision. Yeah. But the vision is evolving like in a in a very positive like wholesome like mature sort of sense like where also like the songs i mean i'm digressing from what the point of this podcast is because mm-hmm. all the new material has is like signs of what we're into and like individually and yeah. what's mm-hmm. what's like inspiring us to like okay let's try and write something in this style but that's really hard to to keep wanting to do like at least for a band writing your own music yeah, uh, especially when you're getting older and you have to make like rational decisions about like career, life, life, oh and mm. just do sensible things. And this is like somehow become a sensible thing, even though it's it doesn't have <clears throat> the same sort of weight to it as like a commercial nine to five, nine to five yeah, yeah. kind of job. Yeah, no, and all of us, I mean, all of us do different things. Yes, you know? like it's, yeah, it's not but that's like this is the, the primary you it's know, the choice. I, it, it, it's just that you know, this is just a nice thing that has been going on. I mean, I, you know what I've I used to keep saying also, you know, like yeah, I love movies, music. I just stumbled into. I became an artist by accident. I think about it a lot, you know, and but you know i think it's very safe for me to say that i really do love music <laughs> i really do love writing songs even though i've always like yeah music is just going to be the first step then i'll write a musical or i want to do a movie but i've always just you know and even though i've kind of dabbled you know in, in all of these other things somehow just writing songs and producing it with you know you know my friends and just like making these things is just been the the thing that has lasted the longest you know out of everything that i've done this is the thing i've committed to the longest in my life um you know in any professional sense and or otherwise but yeah so in that regard i am quite appreciative of the journey 
I mean, we, this happens again to all of us when you look at work you've done a while, a long time ago. You're always looking at those. Oh shit! I could have done that mm. differently. Should have done this. Should have. Oh, always. should have totally not done that. Mm-mm. Any of that bug you? Or you're at this point where you're like, you know, no, what? No, embrace, enjoy, surrender. Me. It's only been ten years. Uh, <laughs> you know, ultimately, I maybe I have to grow even older for me to like look back at it fondly in that way, and I still do. But I went like in the in the way of my idol and one of the people I you know have. fashioned my entire understanding of media John and creativity John Mayer okay George Lucas <laughs> oh, okay uh George Lucas did this to Star Wars right obviously under great uh, you know st- you know like duress and like nobody wanted him to go back to the original Star Wars and change them I didn't want to do that obviously with small victories for the the reason why we're doing this podcast we have a remaster or we're reissuing the album with three new old songs and um New those five songs which are the originals i've we've remastered them but yeah obviously i i went just you know a little nudging here and there uh, but we never re-recorded what was born in storm okay ha huh, sorry yeah <laughs> we never re-recorded anything we left the original parts that sorry, we recorded to, in there no, but for <clears throat> anyone who doesn't understand the word remaster what what is it what is it we, we didn't only remaster the yeah, remaster so was uh, yeah but you know a lot of people re-balanced. Re- make sand uh, when they remaster also I mean, some people do okay whatever but yeah so whatever you okay yeah. we 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 retooled you know the, some of the the just to make it a little more uh, one is to keep it up with the times in terms of just volume and you know how it is but but the other things was like there were there were small things that were bugging me like for many years after that because you didn't have the time to kind of just really look at it now so i just like changed a little of that and i'm very happy no, to I admit don't, it no i don't don't i wouldn't say change you just like sort yeah. of again it's just like fixed tweaked a little yeah. things you know fixed like, because you know. there was no there's no re-recording that happened yeah, there nothing. was no overdubs the that were added yeah. the files were all the files that we had from there it yeah. was just about fixing a few small things which were things that Uh, yeah, that's been bugging me for so long. <laughs> like a bum note or something like that, which mostly yeah. is in my vocals. So I I I changed uh, I just kind of tweaked some of those, but the integrity of the album is still, you know, it's absolutely in 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 place and and it's just the it, it's like almost like just a preservation kind of, you know, uh thing like uh, of this historical document now as it is it is. So, yeah. The the uh, important question Have you spent more time on the remaster than you did on the original album? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh-huh. I not that much, you know. Harsh Desai who is uh, you know, mixed and mastered this new set. He's very quick. He's really good. He's he's done an aw- awesome job. I've just like kind of just like, you know, picked some nits. But overall I'm saying like all your little <laughs> uh, <laughs> Have you spent overall, more time more man hours? time in? Yes. yes more I'm, man what happened to first idea was best idea. First idea was best idea. No, no, no idea was <laughs> best. Uh, f- first execution was not best execution. <laughs> like, first execution <laughs> was execution was. <laughs> no, no man. It was fine. It was yeah. just it just needed a little more care. That's it. I'll uh that's all we've done but it'll be out on the same look day look for we, the description here yeah, yeah. will will mm. will both be available uh, link, at the yeah. same time the, the old ep and the new the old, old ep is already uh, available no no so are you taking down the old ep no not at all ah, yeah. it's like my, it's like daft punk tenure of random also, access memories correct. drumless all version those. is this going to be drumless no no no, no. <laughs> no slowed and reverbed versions nothing like that oh. this is merely to yeah just to commemorate it and add some more songs and make it the full album maybe it needed to be even at the yeah. time as i'll said you know like you to night stationery all these songs that were part of that era uh we've added that and yeah the the important thing is that we've added a new song which is called small victories because this is the only album then i that i would have had which doesn't have a title song mm. and because i'm from india title track you know from bollywood <laughs> is very important correct except there's no small victories sad version <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's no version like you that you can make that yet, <laughs> yet. right now there is uh, but uh, but small victories the song itself is about the album so it's all very like meta and like kind of retrospective it's like a very nostalgic look and even in fact the song itself has been written in the style of the album yeah. from 2014 yeah, yeah. so there's no like crazy production electronic synthesizer nothing there's just like very you know back to basics drums bass guitar you know and and vocals and so yeah an organ and yeah, yeah. like exactly the same instruments that we used on that <laughs> except for and Warren's guitar <laughs> yes that sorry i forgot to mention that Warren has a guitar solo in the song you guys and also he is going to use this key changes in any other song no this is the only song that has a key change and, and ruby. Like ruby yeah, yeah. So, uh-huh, so 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 these so it kind of feels right to to have yeah. this in there and uh, yeah i mean this album happened and then after that many yeah. albums happened and This EP Mi- happened. EP, sorry, <laughs> and then collaborators, musicians, also 
came in and out yeah. of the musical journey of Tejas, yeah. the the the, the band, the, the band. artist, yeah, Tejas, yeah, Tejas the, the band. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that has stayed constant, much like Lu- Ruby in the setlist, is three of you, right? Yeah, that's and true. I mean, we couldn't have done without Tejas. It'd be very awkward <laughs> on stage. <laughs> I mean, you have Imagine tracks now. I just out of yeah, Tejas, yeah, the, the second one yeah. vocal track. Yeah, that's, true, that's uh, true. Yeah, Adil and JJ obviously have um, you know been. Uh, doing this job you know with me for fast long and uh, the interesting thing you know i think so, you know you just said it as a joke but it is absolutely true that i learned a lot of music i mean from all you know three of you um but you know production everything i know about producing now which i try to handle more and more of as jj becomes busy and busy as the business owner that he He's is jogging yeah man yeah, man jogging yeah you know yeah. i've learned so much about music you know i used to make this joke that jj and al were these you know sam guys uncles. you know and oh. you know these music school guys you know <laughs> Not uncles, and um, and and adil was his indie guy you know <laughs> listen to blink 182 and all of that stuff <laughs> you know uh, so and i used to kind of try and rein it in both ways you know where i was like yeah i like some of the technical stuff but i also like the full power feel and then he joined tsm later on and this guy started his studio so he just wanted to rock out you know <laughs> so then it's just like reverse roles <laughs> so i've just seen it happen you know very gr- gr- gracefully and gradually through the entire um, you know 10 years but um, but it's been cool because i've also learned a lot of you know production through these guys and learned how to make a song and you know the the dumbest thing about music is that the more you know the harder it becomes yeah, the bigger yeah, the does. puzzle becomes yeah. then you know oh this frequency here and all that stuff there was something really unadulterated about the process of making the first album because you don't know anything so you don't have to decide you don't have to feel bad about any decision making you just do it and then if it feels good instinctively then it works but now it's like oh yeah but this won't work because you know jj and i have full push pull about yeah. pretty much everything in the in the studio you want to put organ and string <laughs> and backing vocals uh, and yeah yeah and but 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 then you know he's like oh but it's clashing you know you can't have a guitar lick while the vocal i'm like of course you can <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it makes more sense than not. But we've done it before. But some people do it. But some people don't do it. So you know, it's 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 constantly that uh, that thing. But I've learned so much, man. Like, and we're still experimenting. We're still doing different genres. We've done like a disco song. We've done like you know, it, it's been cool to 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 do that. All of those things in in this time. I mean, you know? if you're not pushing, I mean, this whole thing about creativity and doubt and etc. etc. Yeah. If you don't actually put it out there and see how the world reacts, you know, make. I mean, some people. make music only for themselves mm. and some people want to make music for other people also and i feel yeah. like that validation or that that the fact that i mean you know you wouldn't know when if your choices are correct or not without some sort of validation you know how does that doubt start going yeah. away and that doubt goes away only when the music gets out there you make the choice whatever good or bad and then people You're right. like it or don't like uh, it and you know there have been plenty of like we do you know this music has found its fan base and there are people who really really love the songs and you know wherever you go it, it's it's always fun to play those songs you know and they know like like obscure like even falling out and you know it's just it like these songs they mean something to some people and this is mm. for them you know like ultimately i do write a lot for myself and to heal myself and to unravel myself to myself to understand who i am and what i'm going through but you put it out because you yeah. want people to, to i want people to relate yeah relate. i mean like you know even like ever since you know i don't know if it's weird to say this but like you know i feel you know it's such a cliche almost to say oh i feel like we're just getting started now but it really does feel like okay now i understand how to play this game you mm. know properly we've done mm. like all these weird things and every album has been like putting ourselves in some level of discomfort you know first of all doing small victories didn't know how to make an album so that was the first level make it happen or oh, doing a full length thing different instruments different orchestrations different everything you know the production Uh, so that was that was difficult outlast was just three of us doing it during the pandemic it was so weird there was a moment where i was controlling jj screen jj was controlling <laughs> the the studio through zoom you know two three screens in insane stuff and now then museum is like i've never worked with indian you know folk elements or ethnic music and it's about my dad and it's like so again you know so every time it feels like we have like oh okay cool now we have the workflow down which now we know how to do it then it gets changed again you know and um, and I complain a lot about it but uh I do still value that like that we can still keep it fresh yeah, yeah, still yeah, yeah. you know move no, it it's, forward it's definitely evolving like this is this is a really cool 
perspective that I have because I had yeah. the opportunity to play on the first two albums and then see the next two albums as a fan. And I can completely tell you that I I definitely see the progress. I love the later work. I love the pro, the evolution Thanks, that the band man. is taking. Yeah. And uh, like like I thought. Uh, Outlast was phenomenal and then I heard Museum and I'm like oh god they've gone above that so as that perspective of having started out playing and then seeing it it's just a lot of pride it's a lot of uh, thank you Al thank it's, so uh, no it's, mm. it's serious yeah. and, and, and I keep telling you this like it's getting better the, like I, I told the, the live show which uh, y'all played yeah, uh, yeah. earlier this year which I came for it's like it's the best y'all have ever sounded mm. and it's just uh, it's, it's really cool to see as yeah. a perspective and I, I'm lucky to have that yeah. dual perspective I think Jishnu and I are, yeah. Yeah, we can have that perspective because yeah. we were there in the beginning as that avatar, in the band, yeah, in yeah. The band yeah. and then we can see the evolution now and it's no and some awesome. of you guys are still in the tracks you know like when we play oh, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah, really yeah, cool yeah. to listen yeah. to you know it is, yeah. Yeah. it is a weird way to think yeah. about it but yeah. like yeah. so many collaborators you know like have are still in the tracks you know yeah. My mom's ghost voice in is the there machine, my dad's like voice is there yeah yeah the ghost in the machine but yeah um you know thanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is uh, I, I do enjoy that yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you guys uh, <coughs> like stick because I know you play with multiple different projects I think Adil plays with the most number of bands yeah I mean probably yes. Yes. Adil I want to say one thing about Adil Adil says this thing he's like yeah man gigs looking thin this week yeah. <laughs> this one it's true and this guys. fucking guy without fail is playing a minimum of like two gigs a week three gigs a week he'll say this not but he's always playing I feel like there's an impression here that think, is okay, not 100% JJ, accurate. Out of the three of us, who's played the most number of gigs ever? JJ. It I might be JJ. I, think, JJ. I know JJ has played because he's the, older. He's, and he's, <laughs> yes. He's a, older. It's true. He's but I think true. Adil has put down a crazy average. Like his strike rate is mad. In the, <laughs> let's put it this way. This, in the last four or five years, for sure. Now, let's, yeah, we're not yeah. going back into the... But you guys, y'all have played in so many other bands and projects, but still found a way to consistently stick with this one yeah what what keeps you coming back uh it's just a healthy environment i think yeah yeah it's usually what it is because like the thing is when you play with a lot of people you kind of become a different person in that group i mean some people have the ability of being the exact same person no matter what band they're playing with but i like to change how I am and how I play depending on who I'm playing with just so that we get the best out of the the group situation and I think like playing with a lot of people you learn a lot of small things from like different people's idiosyncrasies and mm. skills and it you can always feed one idea into the other but the the cool thing about this unit is that we all are still equally excited I think to do even like the small things like write a song or let's change this one thing at this one gig or which is like a lot of bands I think lose the the drive to do that after a while like it, it doesn't excite them anymore but it's somehow the flame is alive yeah. Yeah. and uh, the marriage is going well is what we're saying uh, so far. I mean for me it's, it's simple I mean played in a few bands and uh, I mean few? Huh? Just just one or two or three. Yeah, hundred. Uh, uh, and then seven. No, not really. Let's not look, make me sound yeah. like a slut. Okay? <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with playing with many bands. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Okay? Uh, but no, I mean, the the point, I mean, actually, honestly, till I started playing with Tejas, the only other band that I played with was Something Relevant. I mean, and, and also for before that, yeah, but those right. are like a different points in time that's when we started. But uh, the thing is that, I mean, but after Tejas, uh, I've played with a lot of artists and the and the one thing and I've been part of a lot of groups and it's not only about like playing music you know just there's a lot of situations where you work with a lot of people mm. and I think feel like egos is a big issue in most things and I feel like in the last 10 years we've all managed to manage that you yeah. know yeah. we've not had any egos amongst us you know like okay the song needs something we do it you know uh, I, you might be able to do it well you know I might think I know more about production but nowadays since they just has been doing his thing okay fine if he likes it he's written the song he has a vision you gotta trust you know <laughs> thanks <laughs> just thanks for having me like let me have that I mean <laughs> <laughs> I know I mean no that's the point right. but right. it's yeah, a point okay. is is that I mean if you're gonna <laughs> let I mean in any any working relationship if you're gonna let egos come in the way then it's gonna be hard to make it survive yeah. for longer 
for a longer period of time and i feel like we've not let that happen and we've and and so that's one thing that's not the be all and end all of it also like i feel like the vision that was there was was simple and clear because for whatever it's worth it's been a musical journey which kind of like tejas has spearheaded in a sense it's not been like me and adil really getting i mean uh, correct yeah. me if i'm wrong I'm not no no you. this is a good point actually but yeah but yeah. it's been like a vision like a songwriting vision of his in a sense and our tastes are kind of similar so mm. we can get on board with him on that front you know so it's been easy yeah why going to fuck up something add to easy? that is like one thing that's good about this band is i mean it is it's they just his name on the on the van name mm. it's not like they just and the some things but we're not looking at it as a as a bad thing like oh you're not like the something else <laughs> 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 he, he didn't mean it it uh, was yeah. funny though yeah, but yeah. uh and i think like <laughs> tejas has the one good skill of like both of us are pretty busy i think with just generally music yeah. related activities um uh, but tejas kind of gets us organized and like working on things in a way that we uh we're very open to each other's inputs yeah. and we haven't like reached any like the ego thing that jj mentioned mm. i think that stifles a lot of bands from like getting ahead because then they're not excited to work with each other like after something goes down mm. or and that that can happen like people change yeah, yeah people change no, yeah that's true. exactly and yeah I was it's not that... only about ego it's just about change also so yeah i mean maybe ego is just one part of the whole thing but exactly yeah and even though like we've also learned we've gotten to know each other to a point that we're very understanding of like we all have things that sometimes we last minute can't yeah. adhere to or whatever like we, today. we I mean, accept <laughs> it and but we adhere. because of that i think it's helped like maintain the growth and like find finding the new like sounds and avenues that we because we're all open to it we're all like okay let's try an indian thing we're all on board yeah. we all try and like see how we can build something like even with big like, museum Yeah. It's a fully new sound mm. that yeah. nobody asked for, <laughs> yeah, but true. we still wanted to do it because we wanted. <laughs> yeah, to do it. really, nobody asked, <laughs> and that's usually the like yeah. important thing. I, I do, idea. I do often feel like it's kind of the best of the of both worlds in the sense that, um, yeah, you know, it's not a band band like you know, it's not a band name. It is my name, and I know. the responsibility that i have with it yeah the so if you don't like the music it's his fault huh? exactly okay. it's one of those things right if you like, like the band is good nice. then you know yeah tejas is good but the band is bad only tejas is bad <laughs> you know it's like hey, one of those things hey, hey, um, hey, hey. no it just, <laughs> i think it comes with yeah, a, know, a yeah. certain yeah. you know responsibility yeah, especially yeah of course it does you know yeah. and we have been criticized for some you know yeah, yeah. decisions and stuff but whatever but the thing is that i get to work uh, I think the other part of it that really works is that we're still also friends and we do hang out outside of this, you know, like yeah. uh JJ a little less because he's very busy, but uh one of the reasons why I choose to continue working is to hang out with them, you know, like it's mm. always fun. And uh, yeah, I don't know, there's never been a moment where I've been like like disheartened or like feel disillusioned I, in myself certainly. uh but never in 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 these two guys and yeah i think that's always made it fun i'm always really excited to play a new song as jj how many times like i i was like guys let's play this new song you know let's play it okay yes, and like, i'll have to tell him like, it's no, not ready we don't have time <laughs> we don't have time to learn it and then he'll, like, no. <laughs> and then somehow we we trick jj into we like trick JJ into he'll like excited. write parts for the song and then it's like okay so the song's that we can play and he's and, like oh and, yeah and, and jj you know it's like, <laughs> it's like a child you know like, <laughs> you know, like i know he's excited but he's trying to be an adult you know and he like No, we don't actually have the time to do all of these things, and he's right. But you know, sometimes you're like, let it happen. You know, no, make it happen. That was, that's the next part, indeed. Okay, yeah. Anyway, that's a good on, place to on end. On that, on that yes. note, uh, yeah, over to you, Raj Deep in the studio. <laughs> 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 Can we please get Rajdeep to continue? <laughs> Dude, you have to put a clip <laughs> there or something.